Hello, and welcome to the CRM Zen Show, where we talk about all things Zoho. This is episode 136, Integration Station, recorded on Friday, March 5th, 2021. From Zenata Consulting, I'm Brett Martin. And I'm Tyler Colt. And we got a special guest with us this week, John Mark Bantock. John, thank, John Mark, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, guys. Pleasure to be here. For those of you that don't know, Catalyst Connect is also a Zoho Premium partner based in Tucson. That's right. Based in Tucson, Arizona, where I will be going soon to get my century pass from the Border Patrol approved. So um, I'm excited about that. I applied for my century pass back in February of 2020. And then they sent me my approval saying I had provisionary approval on January of this year. And they said, now book your appointment with Border Patrol to come in and do your face-to-face -face interview. And uh, I went to book it at the San Ysidro Crossing, which is just down in San Diego. And the next available appointment was February 2022. But, wow. <laughs> <laughs> but in Tucson, I can get there like in a week. So uh, uh, my wife has not got her provisional yet. When she gets it, we're both going to book and we'll just come out and we'll go to dinner, buddy. And I'll, and I'll get my, my approval. That sounds across. great across the border in 10 minutes that'll be fun so, um, so is that a, a fast pass to to jump the border yeah it's uh, like you get the little special card so you basically you get your own special line yeah when you're crossing the border in mexico you get this own little thing you can go through and it also works up in canada so if you're going there you get your own special oh, nice. line and at the mexican border down here in san diego it can be Quickest you're going to get across is going to be 90 minutes to two hours. Um, and with the, with the fast pass, you're out in 10 minutes. Wow. So yeah, it's, it's well worth the hassle of, of getting it. All right. So, Hey, all that, those introductions aside and you know, my travel woes, uh, let's get into our kind of <laughs> announcements and events. Uh, we are going to be doing our Zoho sign overview and best practices on March 16th at 10 AM Pacific time. Uh, you can go to our events calendar and go ahead and register for that. Um, and if you don't know about the events calendar, go to crmzen.com and click on events and every, anything and everything we can find related to Zoho is here. So any event, any webinar, uh, whatever they've got going on, meetups, you name it, we, we try to put it in here. Uh, and if you scroll down about six or seven events, you'll see our sign interview. You can register there. Uh, this Zoho Vault uh, is the best alternative last pass webinar coming up there. Zoho is starting to step up the webinar game. We're noticing more and more. So it's good to see the, good to see the events start to kind of kind of show up there. And with that, let's get right on into the news. So Tyler, we'll start with this uh, API launch for Zoho CRM uh, version 2.1. I haven't don't know much about it, but I just hope we don't have to go into all of the scripts now and change it to 2.1, right? No, I don't, I don't think so with this one. Yeah, when, when they did that last migration, all of a sudden a dot V1 appeared in all of your deluge functions and to update it. This one, it looks like they, they're really just expanding um, version two, adding in some new API calls and then updating some of the functionality for existing APIs. Um, the one that I, that kind of stuck out to me here in terms of something I would imagine us using like now is that send mail API to actually be able to, in a deluge function, call a CRM email template and send it out to a particular record. That's pretty slick. Um, that oftentimes you find yourselves trying to daisy chain workflows to send out those emails. But uh, that can be a dangerous game. Yeah, I think that's that's huge, Tyler. Um, uh, previously, we've had to hard code emails and plain text and custom functions, and being able to pull a template is just so much easier and more professional. So I think that mm -hmm. is a big one. And inventory templates, even interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a couple of the other updates as well. I mean, kind of some administrative things. You can actually get any of your different pipelines, create or update pipelines via API now. Um, you're able to download field attachments from modules. So you could always download from the attachments related list, um, but now you can actually download from one of the attachment fields or image fields. Um, so that's kind of a nice one as well. We find ourselves doing more and more with pulling, pulling files from the CRM and either parking them in WorkDrive or somewhere else. So being able to query a specific attachment field is, is pretty slick. So this would be closer, you think this will get us closer to actually being able to then insert images into a document? I mean, if we've got the API now to grab it, 
be a little different because then you're going into a PDF or into a Word doc. Well, I'm talking itself. into like into Writer, right? I mean, that's kind mm-hmm. of been the big thing, right? You don't have that ability to insert an image, and maybe this would be a work workaround. I doubt it. You're right, but we well we we actually getting close to doing that with the the portal. Uh, what we're doing today is you can map that file field uh, that may have an image in it and a record in CRM and actually display it through your client portal and create far more dynamic client portal pages by displaying those images in a oh, website. Really? Nice, nice. For those of you that don't know, probably the best external client portal for Zoho, the best external client portal for Zoho out there is made by Catalyst Connect and it's called their client portal. And what, you know, we'll talk about that at the end. We'll kind of go through it. You can kind of give us an update on everything that's going on there. But uh, that's, uh, that's an interesting thing. So basically just dynamically present the proposal or the presentation. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. I like it. All right. And then um, CRM field update for workflows has received an enhancement. This is, you know, Tyler, I kind of thought this was here, but I guess it wasn't. So on oh, a yeah, field update. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. I just, uh, on a field update, when any field gets modified or a specific field gets, why did I, is it the any field part? Well, so you could do that with a field update already. If I'm not mistaken, it would give you up to three fields that you could choose and you could say run this on any of these particular fields. Um, I think what they're doing here is they're they're probably looking at the usage of workflows. And I'm sure you can speak to this too, John Mark, where you you do something on edit and then you set the criteria to say if it's edited to a certain value. And mm-hmm. they're kind of moving the criteria up into part of the actual trigger. If, if you're looking at us on um, on YouTube, you can see yeah. they've kind of moved some of those criteria, like if lead status is a certain thing into the actual trigger itself. Yeah, I think that's important because especially with the API changes and uh, the level of automation that uh, we're seeing in systems today, you need to have more granular control on those triggers and making sure that you're not repeating unnecessary tasks. So Mm -hmm. having that kind of uh, control is going to be very important. Yeah, I think I'm going to set this for uh, any field and repeat off every single time. I think that will just be perfect, right? Any field and repeat, any field and repeat. It'll be just go over and over again. I don't understand the any field thing in a record, honestly. I mean, that is just, I'm trying to understand the, I mean, a one-time thing, anytime you update a field, maybe if you're trying to force something, I've got no idea, but it, yeah, you it, could uh, see it. You could see it if you're syncing data. So maybe if you mm-hmm. had like, let's say you had a bunch of products and CRM and you needed to sync those into a creator app or something, you might want to say on any edit, to any field, go ahead and, and hit, you know, a deluge function to sync that data. Uh, we find ourselves not using those too often. I would imagine that them moving this functionality is trying to get people to or circumvent the mistake of checking that box and sending out a bunch of emails to customers on uh, on accident. Yeah. You know, I, I think that, that that may even be worth a deeper dive at some point, guys, is we could do a best practice on workflow setup and repetition with functions because, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, gosh, if, if you've used Zoho for a while, your, your workflow rules list is probably 50 long and there's a lot of duplication across those workflows and it becomes very difficult to manage over time. And uh, I know that I could learn a lot from you guys in, in terms of the organization and best practice with that and share some tips and tricks that we've picked up along the way to just manage those workflows and automation a bit better. Yeah, it's one yeah. of the tricky things is we, we talk to clients about this a lot is, and I'm sure you do too, you can get to the same endpoint with Zoho a lot of different ways. Like there's a lot of different ways you could set up a workflow to get the right outcome, but there's little differences that'll pop up in, you know, 10% of records that can end up making a pretty big effect. Oh yeah, absolutely. We could do a one hour webinar on Zoho workflows, best practices. That would be good. (laughs) It wouldn't be, that that would, that would, that would be popular. All right. And your favorite updates, Tyler. Finally, we haven't had one this month here because, of course, it's only the fifth. But uh, Zoho Analytics got some uh, new features. Yeah, so they have uh, they've created a new UI for creating slideshows, which I will be totally honest. I have never used analytics to create a slideshow. Um, basically, what they are is you can pull in either certain dashboard elements or reports into a structured little slideshow. Um, to display those out to people. They kind of just redid the UI on this, uh, gives you a better way to preview it and a couple more options for managing those. Um, One nice one, and this is something I bumped into often with analytics is 
they've improved it. They've improved uh, chart sorting. Um, so oftentimes what happens is you will create a chart and you'll have multiple different values in your Y axis. So, you know, maybe your X axis is the date and your Y axis is sales and cost. And so previously, when you would add two elements that you want to measure on your Y axis, you could then only sort based on your X axis. Um, so basically what they've done is they've allowed you now to say, you know, I have these two elements in my Y and I want to sort them by this specific one. Um, so if you're looking at like customers and you're looking at your total sales versus total cost by those customers, you might want to know who have we sold the most to and then who have we spent the most on, right, as two different things. And now you can just quickly sort things how you'd like to see it. <laughs> nice. It's kind of a minor slash. update, but it's one of those ones that when you bumped into it in the past, there was nothing you could do if, uh, mm -hmm. if you needed that. So the slideshow, is this kind of like a, like a motivator thing, but you do it in analytics? Is that really yeah, what it is? Yeah, it's kind of like a structured way to present like a series of reports kind of in like a little looping slideshow. Um, oftentimes I find uh, dashboards work a little better because then you're dropping yeah. in your you know specific user filters and things like that. Um, but for like a quick high level, I could see a use for a slideshow. I think it's also a nice way to organize it. Sometimes those dashboards can get a little overwhelming with so much information on the same uh, screen. So presenting in a slideshow may be a little bit more digestible, especially if you have it up on like a conference room TV and mm -hmm. uh, you want to cycle through some uh, uh, reports. All right, moving on. Zoho Sprints now integrates with Zoho Show. These two things do not go together, <laughs> but uh, someone decided we... <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. I've read through this. I'm, uh, I, so Zoho Sprints, for those of you that don't know, is uh, basically Zoho's version of Jira. Uh, it is um, sprint based. What's the what's the word I'm looking for there? Scrum time? or agile Scrum, development. Scrum, agile development, right? Um, so it's basically a project management tool, uh, mostly used by people who are developing software. And it's integrating with Zoho Show, which is your PowerPoint presentation software by Zoho. So, yeah, and kind of what it's letting uh, you do, it looks like, is pull in like a specific element or card or little report from Sprints just directly into a presentation. Right. right so maybe if you have like a weekly roll up meeting and you want to quickly just present a couple KPIs from various Sprints that you're working on, I could see a use case for kind of pulling these in quickly and easily just as a as a touch base, especially given that a lot of people that are using sprints are probably following some type of daily standup or, you yeah. know, weekly, weekly meeting. I could, I could see it. I can see exactly how this happened. There's uh, everybody over at all the Zoho developers use sprints and they probably <laughs> had to give their weekly reports <laughs> and they're tired of cutting and pasting. So they made this integration. And so, uh, good. That's nice. So I expect to see that on a weekly basis now as we go through all of our development. We'll just <laughs> post that right on in. All right. And then moving along, Zoho Recruit has now partnered with Skill Survey. Man, we've seen Zoho Recruit. It's just, they've been doing a lot of really nice stuff. A skill survey basically allows you to do reference checks and kind of automates that entire reference check process. So this is a, a nice little uh, integration they've got here. Anybody? No, it's about it. I guess there's really not much more to say on that than, than we've got that nice integration. Is there anything else? Yeah, it's reference check, really. Yeah, that's it. What is that's that word? It. Wait, what is this word? Before you? talent, it's on a what? talent acquisition. Ac oh, activities do. Okay, it's just a space. They just missed a space. I was like, that's uh, a new word. Okay, <laughs> yeah, just a space. <laughs> activities do on a didgeridoo. Yes, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> That's, that could be it. Activities do. It could be a new instrument. Um, all right. Well, at least you got that one going there. It could be a show title in there somewhere. Who knows? All right. And then moving on with the Zoho News, and we've got a lot this week. Uh, Orchestly, the application which we have never used, and I, I think we are going to have to one time, now has an extension for OrcDrive. Um, you know, I, I I feel like we're missing the boat on Orkestly here. I don't know if anyone in our audience has ever used it or done anything with it. It's really one of those interesting applications. Basically, it's kind of workflow orchestration across all of the Zoho apps. Um, and it seems to be getting more and more robust. What is it, about two years old now? Um, 
Yeah, I think they kind of yeah. first announced at the Dev Conference in 2019. It was right yeah. around when it rolled out, right? It was either soon before or soon after. You know, Brad, before the show, we were chatting a little bit about how far along work drive has come. I know that you got a few updates there, but I think that Orchestry, Orchestry could play very well into uh, um, you know, document management and uh, sharing uh, yeah. relevant files uh, for a client directly into that work drive folder. And uh, I know that we've historically just done that via the API, but being able to push and pull things and govern uh, that workflow through Orchestly, I think is going to become fairly commonplace uh, as everyone gets used to it. And I mean, I see the use case for Orchestly in terms of, you know, you have these people at your company that may need to approve things or touch things and all these different various apps from, you know, CRM, Books, Sign, Work Drive. And it's kind of an interesting way to abstract those processes out of individual apps into one place where you basically say approve or not approve or, you know, send to somebody else, right? And triggering all those functions. I just, we haven't found that killer use case yet where you've really implemented it at scale. Yeah, one day. One day. All right. And now Biggin gets tag management. So uh, the Biggin train keeps rolling down the tracks here, folks. And I guess they didn't have tags before, but now they do. Um, and you cannot get tags on the free plan. <laughs> <laughs> so if, if you really wanted tags, you're going to have to pay for them. Uh, but I think it's... Uh, it's good. I just I thought tags were there already, um, but I guess they weren't on the for mobile. the mobile app. Maybe specifically for the mobile app, yeah. So the yeah. tags are then being pushed down, and this mobile app is so good, so good. I'm actually thinking about you know we did the integration between CRM and and Biggin, and it's uh, I'm I'm truly convinced that is the, the you know for anybody who's really in the Zoho ecosystem who has Zoho CRM. If you got salespeople out there and you want to give them a slim down pipe drive version of everything, you know, you basically spin them up inside of Biggin and they just live inside Biggin and the synchronization works well. And, um, you know, with what they did with the, uh, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, we talked about how they really improved all the, you know, the pipeline management mm -hmm. inside of this mobile app. It's, uh, it's pretty slick. It's getting there. I don't know if you've had a chance to play with Biggin yet, John Mark, but it's, uh, it's getting better. It's pretty good. Yeah, I, uh, honestly, not in depth. Um, uh, most of our clients uh, default to uh, the CRM with more complex uh, processes, but uh, I, I have uh, uh, seen it come a long way. And I think that the ease of use is is tremendous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's what we find too. And you know, it's like as as you know, you can do such crazy things in the CRM, right? I mean, anything from inventory management, you know, we've built bond yield calculators in the CRM. You can really do just about anything in there, but you probably have a team of salespeople that want to move deals through stages. They want to place calls. They want to take notes and being able to just, add, you know, pull all that out of what is kind of a huge system with the CRM and is something that's just totally mobile optimized is, um, it's a good use case. We didn't get it at first, honestly, when Vigan came out, you know, early last year, whenever that was, it was super confusing, but I think it's kind of defined its space now as kind of almost a mobile extension or just optimizing the mobile app for CRM. Yeah. Yeah. And like I say, I, I, I think, you know, just like, like we just saying, keep, keep it for sales guys and, you know, away you go. Other than that, I think it's a good competitor for pipe drive too. If mm -hmm. somebody, you know, if you've got those people that just want to move from pipe drive over, it's, it's probably pretty good there. All right. And then just kind of a couple general roundups that were sent out kind of February updates. We've covered most of this. The first one is Zoho inventory. They put out their community digest. If you're not familiar, you know, head over to, you know, help.zoho.com. Click on the community once you're in here. Um, it's a great place to find things. Anyway, the Zoho inventory community digest, I'm pretty sure we got all these. Um, but they've got some webinars coming up and you that you can register for. Highly recommend you take a look at those. Um, matter of fact, we need to add this one to our we need to add this webinar to our events list. I don't think that's there. And then I think I think we got all the product updates. I'm just not sure that there's anything here, but uh, these yeah. community digests are good to look at. Yeah, I'm looking for one more. They did make an update to this product that I don't know if they'll ever announce it, but um, we bumped into it with someone recently with packages inside of inventory. And you can, similar to the other modules, you can create custom views uh, inside of packages. Maybe if you want to say if it's shipping to a certain state or if it's you know within a certain date period. 
Um, but we bumped into an odd issue where you couldn't edit those views or delete those views once they were created. And they actually added that functionality pretty quickly, actually, once we reported it for this client. So I've, I've been kind of tracking these to see if they'll announce it on here, but uh, I'm just waiting to take credit, you know, for my, my, my beautiful find that, uh, that we had there. But well, not. sometimes this stuff never shows up, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, it just, it never shows up. So you'll, it's just something that appears and then that's it. And then the last one is a kind of a what's new for February. And this was with backstage. Um, I think we got all these as well. Zoho work drive integration was a big one for Zoho backstage. I think it's pr pretty nice. Um, again, this is just around, we've covered every single one of these over the last few shows, but and Brad, I just wanted to, to, to weigh in here a little tip for uh, Zoho inventory that we came across in the last few weeks is for those organizations that do their product management across both Zoho inventory and Zoho CRM, make sure that if you are adding in products, especially on a large import and you're needing to track inventory on those products, make sure that you add the product in Zoho inventory and select that you want to track inventory on it. Otherwise, you end up getting into the trap of adding in a product into CRM, and then you can't delete it if you get a transaction on it. So make sure that uh, uh, on those imports that you bring it into inventory first and enable the inventory tracking so you don't paint yourself into a corner. And I, I will say on that as well, you know, you can't add the inventory account once there has been a transaction. But um, a little tip for our listeners, if you bother Zoho Inventory and their support team, they can give you a link that will do it. Now, there are some limits. You can only have so many transactions for an item in order to be able to update it to inventory tracked. But if you, if you email them enough and you follow up and you follow up and follow up, you will get escalated high enough to where they will give you a link to do it. Um, but yeah, it is best try to get those when you first do it. Cause what's going to happen if you turn it on later is you're going to have a negative inventory count for all of the sales you've ever made. You know? So when you turn that thing on, if you've sold it 500 times and you have negative 500 stock on hand. Um, so yeah, if you're already in that position, um, there is a way out as long as you have uh, under certain limits of transactions. Yeah, to quote Ross Perot, like uh, uh, Zoho inventory is like my crazy aunt that lives in the basement, man. I just don't, I can't quite figure it out half the time. I love it. And then it, there are just some maddening things with it. It is improving though, right? I mean, it is it is improving on a daily basis. So that is, uh, that is good news. All righty. And let us move on with yet more news. Uh, the Zoho CRM iOS app has now added the ability to view line items in inventory records as subforms. This is interesting, um, but basically if you're watching us on YouTube, so if you have a, you know, in, this is CRM inventory basically, mm -hmm. right? This is not inventory inventory. So this yeah. is if you've, you've put together a, uh, a quote, you've got basically the line items, you're now gonna be able to view them directly in the mobile app presented to you as a sub form on the quoted items. Yeah, and I think this builds on the update they rolled out maybe a month or so back where they actually redid that quote table in the CRM records where previously you couldn't edit it, but they kind of right. changed it over to be treated as a sub form where you could add custom fields. So I think this is them basically pushing that functionality to the mobile app now as well. Yeah, and you can search the sub form for the data too, which is good. Um, Interesting use of the, doing it in subforms, though, but I think, why not? And then we got three new updates for Zoho Meeting that fall under the category of I thought that was a thing. Uh, the first one is uh, Zoho Meeting. Up. You can now have recurring webinars, um, which is just great because if you're using Zoho Meeting and you, uh, you know, for example, the CRM Zen Show is a recurring webinar. It goes on and on. Otherwise, you have to set it up every week. So it's kind of nice they did that. And then they've got some Q&A enhancements in here as well. Any thoughts on this, guys? 
Um, you know, I, I think that uh, they certainly are bringing a lot of development resources to this product. I think that we've seen uh, consistent improvement, uh, um, you know, week after week. And I think this is great. Um, you know, the, the, the whole UCAS uh, movement, um, uh, unified communication as a service that uh, Zoho is progressing towards is, is coming along really nicely. Uh, for those of you that may have missed the announcement earlier this week, uh, Zoho is launching their own phone uh, service uh, and now with Zoho meeting, they, they really are um, uh, you know, pushing forward on a lot of these communication channels and improving them. Yeah, they've got that came from Zoho Day, correct? I believe That's what so. I talked yeah. about that. Yep, yep, yep. We're going to cover Zoho Day next week. I'm kind of waiting for the list of things that came out of that to, to percolate down here, but uh, yeah. some interesting stuff there. Yeah, we're still waiting on a couple of those updates here. Um, you know, not to steal this from our Q&A later, but one of our listeners, Jessica, asked, how does Zoho Meetings rival Zoom? It is getting there. There are just a couple little things, like the recording quality is still kind of an issue if you do need high quality recordings of any meetings. And then unless they've updated it quietly, there's still no waiting room. There's So, not. you know, if you were to join a Zoom meeting a minute early, you know, you get put into the queue. And then once the meeting starts up, the host can add you in. With Zoho Meetings, it just asks you to refresh. Um, there really isn't like that queue or waiting room. So those two things are really the big prohibitors. Other than that, I mean, we actually were on a Zoho meeting the other day and, and the UI is great. They've they've definitely improved a lot about the product. Um, but some of those issues for us kind of make it a no-go for now. Yeah, I think, I think you know, I could get over the waiting room. It's more or less the, the recording quality at this point in time. Um, you know, they're still, they're doing four by three, it looks like 480 resolution. I'm pretty sure it's 480. It's not 720. Um, and then you don't get, you know, one of the things with most of the real webinar or meeting softwares that are out there is that you, when you do a recording, you get five or six assets that you can download. You get, you know, the video assets of just the, the, the speakers that are presenting. You get just the deck. You get discrete audio. You get the deck with speakers on it, you know, and it's all done that way. You don't get, and that's really necessary if you want to, you know, if you watch our show, you know, it doesn't come out of the box that way. It has to go to an editor. And, you know, as long as they've got all these different properties that they can actually kind of put into, you know, final cut and dial everything in the way it needs to be dialed in. That's great. And you can't really get that, um, out of, uh, out of Zoho meeting right now. But if you just wanted to do something where you're just showing the slides, which if you'll notice most of the presentations you'll see from Zoho that they're doing, cause they're using meeting, it's just the slide deck. Cause that's really what's being recorded. Um, but mm -hmm. we do have a little audio. It, there's some audio issues, but I, I think you're right. It's, it's close, man. I mean, I, I was super impressed with the UI. It's just mm -hmm. Heads and tails above where it, where it used to be. So, all righty. And that brings us to our implementation of the week. What do we have? Yes, this is one that we built out just this week, um, kind of based in Zoho subscriptions, but it does run some updates over to the CRM. Um, so kind of as a broad strokes, you know, a general use case is you've got these people that are subscribed to different plans and different products and subscriptions. And what you may want to do is, you know, maybe campaign to those people. Maybe you want to have someone place a call to them once a week and check in, make sure everything's going well with their subscription. Um, but when you have all these subscriptions, there's no default way to go into the CRM and actually make a custom view of people that have a subscription to a particular plan or product. Um, but the good news is inside of subscriptions, we can basically trigger a deluge function on just about any action. So whether it's the activation of a subscription, an upgrade, a cancellation, non-payment, you know, trial expiration, really any of those, um, any of those types of elements. And then what you can do is, you know, when that function triggers, you go ahead and find which customer that is in the subscription and you go and match them to the CRM version of that customer. And then based on the product and plan, we can go ahead and update either one or multiple fields in that contact record to identify them as a subscriber to a particular plan. Right. So at that point, you know, you can create your custom views. You could sync them into campaigns if that's where you'd like to do your outreach. You know, you could set up some recurring tasks in the CRM. Um, but at the end of the day, this is kind of a quick and painless way to um, allow you to actually get vi full visibility and workability in the CRM based on subscriptions data. 
Yeah, I, I think that that's going to be huge, Tyler. Um, I, I know that one of the struggles that we all have is uh, really getting the necessary data to the contact record to segment uh, contacts in Zoho campaigns for, for drip campaigns and status updates, follow-ups. And, uh, uh, you know, we've done some pretty slick integrations between Zoho subscriptions and third-party services to activate or deactivate license keys based on a subscription being active or not. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I think that this is a perfect complement to that, being able to communicate uh, to those uh, sub, uh, subscribers uh, in an effective and, and efficient way. Yeah, and it's, I mean, it's really well thought out I because they give you all the different actions and then you can filter on top of those. So like in this case, particularly, they wanted to have kind of sub buckets of people that had a trial, had a trial expired, and then which plan they had a trial or an expired trial for specifically. So you can actually set up multiple workflows and then just filter on status, right? So there's actually statuses for trial, trial expired, and then a real activation and a real subscription uh, expiration. So you can actually have, you know, we, in this case, I think we had four workflows, basically any upgrade or activation of a real one or trial, and then, you know, deactivation of a real subscription or trial. And it basically is able to capture any variability and then just, you know, map everything over to the, uh, the contact. So yeah, nice. uh, I think that's a, a great use case. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, I think that uh, in this new SaaS world, uh, being able to uh, track not only the subscription statuses, but activity and being able to market to those customers based on uh, their usage of products in addition to the statuses of that uh, can be really helpful. And, and that's something that we get into pretty deep uh, in our analytics of tracking how our customers are using our products mm-hmm. and integrating those usage statistics into the CRM so we can see see when the last time they logged into one of mm. our services and follow up with folks that, you know, may be paying for a product that they're not using. And we mm. can reach out to them and uh, and ask if they are enjoying the product. Uh, if we've seen that they haven't logged in in two weeks, we know that uh, we may need to do some better training to, um, you know, get their, their usage up. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, and that's full circle too, because you can actually start to learn what types of signals precede a cancellation. Exactly. Right, and then be extra aggressive when you start to see those patterns for a particular user. Right. Very nice. Very nice. I love what we've been doing with subscriptions too. You know, we've got so many functions that we've written now. Things were like, you know, if people are buying hours, it's writing those hours to the CRM and updating the record and then decrementing them. And, you know, we've, we've taken that things we used internally. I think we have a uh, a health spa where people are buying or, or a studio, people buying teeth whitening and they're on a subscription and those teeth whitenings can add up. They get one a month and, you know, the, the subscriptions are going, everything's in the CRM. It makes it so nice to have all this information, not just from a marketing perspective. I just think just the the utility of having it in that client CRM record is it's, it's yeah. great. Good stuff. All right. That moves on to this week's read and it is a monster uh, from... <laughs> HubSpot, a uh, 19-minute uh, how to create an effective customer journey map. Uh, I, I did love the the one line I pulled out of here where you, you can go through all of this, but the best way to understand the journeys of your customers is by asking them, which I think kind of sums it all up. But um, and how does your customer buy from you? How do they get to you? What does that entire journey look like? How it has changed over the years because it has changed so much. Um, you know, people basically will research a product to death before there's even any level of engagement kind of before you get there. Um, but this is nice. I mean, they've done templates. Uh, they kind of step you through the entire mapping process. And I think everything you need here in this extremely uh, detailed article, uh, super nice job, PubSpot. Yeah. And, you know, we were looking for a theme for today's uh, um, uh uh, Zen show and you know, one of the listeners came up with integration station and you know, <laughs> now that we're going through all of these uh, uh, updates I mean we have Orchestly, we have this customer journey mapping and we have a very exciting update coming in about a month's time we releasing a new tool to map uh, and plan all of your customer journeys and workflows in light of the software that's going to support that business process and this is a common theme right I mean you, you really have to run your business on these platforms and being cognizant of what 
what your business workflows and your customer experience from start to finish and architecting your software to support that process is going to become critical. And those organizations that um, are early adopters of this are going to really put themselves far ahead of the competition and having the software support and drive those workflows um, as opposed to being reactive to a lot of these things uh, as has been uh, commonplace in the past. When are you planning on releasing that? That sounds pretty cool. Yeah, we, we actually have um, our, uh, a beta open. So uh, for those who may be interested in um, uh, leveraging that tool, it's going to be uh, available uh, for you to not only define and map your business plan, business processes, there's diagramming tools and templates in there to uh, perform your data architecture and workflows, define your customer journeys and processes and which apps in the Zoho ecosystem or third-party apps for that matter are going to help support those processes. So you can really wrap your head around the convergence of your business processes and the technology that's needed to support it. Yeah, and honestly, I mean, that's that's a common challenge. Uh, I was talking to one of our clients the other day, and he does listen sometimes. So if you if you hear this one, you know who you are. And, you know, he brought up one of the key points that, that we bump into a lot is that, you know, you're going to, in that customer journey, in, in the most simple world, you're going to at least touch campaigns, CRM, books, and likely desk for support down the line. And there really isn't like that top-down view right? So it doesn't really provide any overarching view of all these different things that are happening in all the various applications. And so I think tools like this and and tools that you're talking about with your beta coming up are are pretty valuable because you really should map this stuff out from a business process perspective and then plug in the technology where it's needed, right? Rather than starting with what can the CRM do and how do I fit my business into that? Because it's a common mistake and it's an easy one to make. Absolutely. And and it's going to save you a lot of pain in the uh, the long run, being able to fully map everything out. And so you don't have to re-architect things once you get to a, a fork in the road. Yep. And if you've been watching on YouTube during this entire conversation, I've been scrolling through the article and I just <laughs> got to the bottom of it. That's how comprehensive <laughs> this article is. So uh, nice job, Mr. I'm still trying to scroll to get to the top. Uh, Aaron Agius. Uh, I am Aaron Agius at twitter.com. So uh, anyway, check. Uh, good job. Quite, uh, quite well done. All right. And that takes us to what's new on Zanata.com. We are uh, keeping up with the Joneses here with the blogs. Don't get intoxicated from bad leads. Get intoxicated from good scotch. That's what I say. Um, <laughs> when it comes to marketing, anyway, another uh, nice blog on leads and uh, determining what is a good lead. And, uh, you know, I think I'm not sure if we're taking it through the BANT process here, but uh, uh, really kind of what you want to do to manage your leads inside the CRM. Um, and uh, again, as I scroll through this, uh, really great work from the, from the marketing yeah, team here. An important so, one to keep track on just because just because a source gives you a lot of leads doesn't mean that it's a good source, right? So you want to try to figure out where the, what are those points in the system when you can start to judge the quality of leads in addition to the quantity. Yeah. And then I didn't know this was a thing, but Zoho, People versus Bamboo HR. Which one is right for you? Well, I hope it's Zoho, but we've got a nice article here about that that kind of goes through the two of them and uh, talks about their differences and pricing. And I guess if you're a, we must have done some research that determined that Bamboo HR was a competitor, Tyler. That's what my guess is. So Yeah, they're pretty go. big HR platform out there. They are. <laughs> they are. So uh, this does a nice uh, side-by-side comparison between the two. And then... Um, uh, Tyler and I didn't kill each other. We actually managed to bang out an entire uh, beginner series on Zoho Sign in under an hour. I think we brought that in. Uh, so our first video has launched. Looks like it's seven minutes long. And this is just basically how to set up a template. And we're kind of going through that entire process of how to do that. And these will drop once a week. What were the other topics we covered? How to set up a we template? We covered some sign forms, uh, some of the settings that you want to be aware of, and then yeah. sign tags for sign the tags. CRM integration. Yeah, so those will drop every week, and that's kind of leading up, well, in the middle of the month, then we'll have our Zoho sign uh, webinar as well. And then Wayne did it again. He found the uh, Zoho Vault Best Practices Guide. 
looks relatively new. It's got the newer UI. So give it a shot if you are a user of Zoho Vault, which is gaining a lot of traction lately, um, especially with the last pass changes that have been made. They, they've just got a huge uptick going on there over in Zoho Vault. So uh, really good stuff. And we found yet another guide. Um, and that takes us to our application of the week. Uh, so last time, if you, I believe last week we were talking about session box. Mm -hmm. This is session box on steroids. <laughs> so the ghost browser, um, basically is a Chromium browser. So you, it's its own standalone browser and it is super, super, uh, powerful. Uh, but basically when you fire this thing up, you can click a button and import all your bookmarks, import all your extensions from Chrome because all the Chrome extensions will work inside here. And you end up with the uh, ability to have multiple identities. Uh, so kind of the reason, the purpose for this would be, let's say you're having to log into, you know, one application is three different people, or you want to have a login, you know, you, you log into the bank as yourself and you're logging into the bank as your wife, because you've got separate accounts. But every time you've got to log out and log back in, log out and log back in, this is a steady state sessions. You can have as many sessions as you want. Uh, it is uh, super, super powerful. Uh, but I've been playing around with it for a couple of days now. And I think, um, I think we move the whole dev team to this thing. Yeah, this it's, one might be the one because we we bump into this a lot, especially changing Zoho accounts. And I'm curious to see if you have the same issue, John Mark. Um, the dreaded error 400 when you try to authenticate <laughs> something. Once you have too much in your cache, too many cookies, then when you try to authenticate things, you know a lot of services just get a little bit wary or error out because you just have so many identities stored in one browser. Yeah, and this seems like a pretty great solution for that. Yeah, I think so. Especially that it's all in one window, I think is awesome. Uh, we use Chrome profiles extensively. And uh, uh, that's great if you are constantly hopping in and out of, you know, perhaps 10 common client accounts that are on your plate. But if you start getting, you know, beyond that, uh, you, you hit the nail on the head, uh, you know, unless you have a, a monster machine with a, a crazy amount of memory and, uh, you know, your command station of four screens, as I think mm -hmm. we all do these days, it can be kind of overwhelming. So I think the ghost browser really does a good job of keeping things lean. And uh, um, especially since it doesn't run processes in the background, uh, I believe, uh, on the apps Correct. that aren't currently active. So if, uh, if you have a, a ton of tabs up there, it'll uh, basically pause the uh, the, the bandwidth mm -hmm. on those tabs until you click into it. And that's going to be huge for uh, you know keeping things uh, running smoothly. It's super, super nice, but here is the only downside of Ghost Browser that I can see is that it is expensive. <laughs> it is $21 per month per user, which is, I think, the version that most people would need. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're going to pay $240 a year uh, for this, but I think you save that uh, quickly. You know, just in the time saved and, uh, you know, not having to reauthenticate, never running into all those things. So, uh, yeah. but anyway, I'd be interested was, to see if they have a team edition where you can share these spaces. That's that's the big one because we battle with two factor authentication. With Zoho, we actually have to log in as a super admin for clients. And for a lot of people, they're going to have two factor on that account. And one of the challenges we run into is once I start hitting those cash issues, I have to clear my cash which means I have to then re-authenticate all my two factors, which, yep. you know, luckily our, most of our clients are very responsive. They let me in basically right away, but it'd be nice if we just didn't have to do that at all. And, you know, once one user has it, they can share it to everyone else. That'd be a, just, a, <laughs> I'm excited already just thinking about that. Yeah, it's good. It's good, uh, good stuff. So we're going to have to take a look at that in, in some deep, ways in the next couple of weeks. And then I'm excited about the tip of the week. Jessica, are you still on? Jessica, this one's for you. So <laughs> this is, Tyler, you have not commented on this. I posted this somewhere else, but uh, I was, so it turns out that when you are in Zoho CRM and you do a search, that search is specific to the order of the modules in the tabs. So 
if you have your activities as your first module, which many people do, that's one of the first things you want to go to, and you start searching, it's going to, it's going to ruin your search because it's just going to bring up all the activities. So if you want to, so if you move it to accounts, contacts, leads, deals, that's the order it's going to do the search. Um, when you do such, uh, just a crazy tip. I think I've told about 10 people about it. None of them even, uh, even knew. Uh, what was going on. So it was, uh, it was pretty crazy. <laughs> do you, you guys, guys know this? this works for tab groups as well? If you had different tab groups, would those search differently? I would imagine that they may, if you, if you're actually setting those up. I would think so. Yeah, I that's interesting. So. I mean, this is huge for just efficiency in the system. Um, and also just be aware that when you're searching for a record in uh, the CRM, usually it takes about a minute or so for Zoho to index data. So if you enter something new and you go to search for it, don't be alarmed if it doesn't show up right away. It usually takes a minute or so for it to show mm -hmm. up in the universal search. I'm still waiting for them to copy. Now they've put out the improved search into recruit and into begin. I'm really just waiting for that to go over to the CRM where I feel like I need it the most because I see it in these other apps and it's fantastic now what they've done with filtering in the search, making field updates right inside the search bar. Uh, so please, Zoho, if you're listening, copy paste that into the CRM for us. We're, we're <laughs> excited to have that. All right. Hey, and John Mark, since we got you here. You want to give us an update on the Catalyst Connect client portal? I've got a lot going on there. Yeah, so we've made a lot of huge updates to our client portal plugin for WordPress. Um, as you know, uh, Zoho's uh, uh, customer portals are all specific to each app. And that can be very challenging for organizations that use multiple apps in the Zoho One ecosystem. And our plugin solves for that issue. You can create a consolidated customer portal on your website that integrates across about nine different Zoho apps. And uh, uh, some of the, the most popular ones that we are working with so far include CRM, desk, books, subscriptions, uh, Zoho Vault, which can be really slick for having that security to uh, share uh, passwords, uh, work drive for document management, of course, projects, sign. Uh, we've done some slick things with Zoho Forms now as well, including bookings, analytics, uh, Google Maps address completion, and Zoho inventory for e-commerce capabilities within the plugin. So the, the, the biggest updates that have really um, come out this year have been far better um, control over the UI of the portal. You know, one of the, the awesome things that our plugin achieves is that it's deployed directly on your domain and you have complete flexibility in how the uh, portal is built. So you can create uh, dynamic dashboards over here. We actually have five themes to choose from. Uh, as a starting point, you can choose some default colors for each of those five themes. And then we actually give you full CSS and JavaScript control over the UI of the portal. So you can really assimilate um, a portal into your website uh, natively and uh, really have it be a seamless experience for your users and uh, give them that one-stop shop to uh, see relevant data across the Zoho ecosystem system mm -hmm. that is related to their account. Uh, one of the other big updates that we pushed is the ability to choose um, how data is displayed to users. So oftentimes you may have a customer that belongs to multiple accounts. Our portal su uh, supports a single sign-on so that customer can access data through multiple accounts in your uh, Zoho account. This is great if you're a CPA firm, for instance, and you have a personal relationship with the client as well as a business relationship. They can now just have one login to this portal, be able to access their tickets, their invoices, CRM data across both their personal profile and the businesses that they have access to, making it far more streamlined to coordinate with them. Um, the other thing that we have introduced is some of those dynamic elements that we touched on earlier today, uh, being able to bring in CRM data into uh, the detail pages of the portal. So you can actually insert now banner images, uh, iframes, uh, uh, text blocks, in addition to field data from the Zoho records directly in the customer portal page. And uh, this way you can actually create some really slick detailed views uh, with CRM data 
uh, and, and almost have this website that's powered by Zoho data. So there's some really um, slick updates and uh, uh, you know, welcome opportunity to dive into specific use case and, and details with anyone that would like to explore that further. But uh, I know that we're running out of time on, on today's show, so I'm going to cut it there and uh, uh, you know, happy to, to answer questions and follow up uh, at a later time. Yeah, I just want to tell you, man, great work. I mean, I'm not surprised because I've seen this. I've seen the improvements you've made. But from from version one of this or even what you had a year ago, just the enhancements, the customization. I mean, it looks just mm. just great work, John Mark. Really, really great work. Thanks, man. Uh, yeah, it's uh, we have a lot of dev resources on this. We are uh, really building in some amazing features with the ability to not only govern data by roles, but now profiles as well and dynamically show high tabs based on different uh, processes. So oftentimes we have clients come to us needing an effective way to onboard their customers, have detailed task lists that then hyperlink to different areas of the portal. So when you onboard a customer, you may want them to fill out a profile and then sign up for a certain subscription subscription package, we can now give them a detailed task list that hyperlinks to different areas in the portal for them to do just that, complete their profile, sign up for a package, pay an invoice, submit a ticket, kick off a project. And uh, of course, all of this triggers actions back in Zoho. So you can actually have customers complete an onboarding form and then have a little custom functional workflow that kicks off a project. And then that is displayed in real time in their portal. Awesome. Yeah. Good stuff. I just love watching you build this thing. It's, you know, and the fact that you can do custom portals and they're not cheap and John Mark does those, but if you want, um, you've got several partners, we're one of them and you can even, it's even a do it yourself, but the WordPress plugin, you know, it's pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, I know we've got a lot of people that come to us to kind of help customize that a little bit, but um, just get it, download it, play with it. It's uh, it's worth taking a look at. Was there a free trial on that? There is, yeah. There's a 14-day free trial. Um, you can definitely get started on your own, and and we're certainly happy to help uh, get things started. Rock and roll. All right, what do we got? Q&A, Tyler, anything? Yeah, we've got a couple questions here. One from Kevin. Have they ever reset physical inventory? Um, I'm not sure if I understand the question. Maybe you could follow up a little bit on that. I think he's following up here. Yeah. Ah, uh, so yeah, he's got, uh, so he migrated basically a bunch of data into books from previous accounting system and the accounting stock matches. Um, but Zoho inventory also tracks physical stock, um, which is done by purchase orders and, um, oh, pardon me. It's done by shipment receives and then outbound shipments to actually try to track what's in inventory. John Mark, do you know any ways to hit that specifically? I think when you do an inventory adjustment, that's only ever going to hit your accounting stock. If I, uh, if I'm yeah, proud. I believe so. Um, uh, yeah, that, that's something that I can go back to my team and uh, uh, can see if we have any workarounds. Could you do like a dummy receive on something? I guess that would be an issue because it's going to add to your um, like purchase costs for all of those. Might have yeah, to I'm, I'm sorry. Off the top of my head, I, I don't, I don't have any an answer for that. Oh, that's certain. Also, uh, Jessica, we talked about it last week, but is it possible to file in an account as an attachment from a work drive file on conversion? It is through a custom function. You can do that. Matter of fact, we were just talking about it last week and Josh is bouncing off the wall about it. He loves it. <laughs> so there's a lot we can do there, uh, but that is possible. And I doesn't know if this if the ghost browser has separate IP addresses for the users. I'm not sure, Mark. Well, I think I mean it, you can run it through a proxy. It seems like so you could probably yeah. set up that each one gets a different proxy. And I would assume that's going to assign them unique IP addresses. I think. All righty, and with that, I'm gonna wrap it up, guys. Thanks so much for uh, joining us every week. We uh, really appreciate uh, doing the show for you guys and really appreciate you coming in and listening and watching. If you want to reach us, you can head over to zanata.com or crmzen.com. And on the website is where you'll find complete episodes as well as show notes with links to the stories we discussed today. As always, you can follow us on your favorite social media platform and subscribe to us on your favorite podcast app as well as on YouTube. We'll see you next Monday.